the tools and technologies that allow us to deliver very high doses of radiation to early stage lung cancer are now being applied to treat metastatic disease both in the lung and elsewhere in the body. It's being used as a tool to try to deliver higher doses of radiation after you've done radiation to a broader swath of tissue using conventionally fractionated radiation. And it's designed to treat residual or recurrent disease when you've already had radiation in the prior field. So these are all applications where SBRT is being used. SBRT has been used to treat metastases in the adrenal glands, the liver, lung, spinal, bones, and even in localized adenopathy that's somewhere in that vicinity. One of the questions that comes up, and we hear a lot about this in cancer discussions in general, is this idea of oligometastatic disease versus simply metastatic disease. So it's possible for some cancers that there might only be a few isolated metastatic deposits of cells, and that's what people mean when they say oligometastatic disease. But for other cancers, if there's one site that has metastases, it means that there are more sites, you just simply don't know it, and that a single site of metastases means that the patient really has metastatic disease all over their body. The difference between these two is that in theory, if you have oligometastatic disease and you stamp out the known sites of disease, you could actually change the projection for that particular patient going forward and potentially even cure them. But in the patient that has metastases that's reflective of widespread metastases, treating one spot doesn't seem to change the outcome of these particular patients. In the setting of lung cancer, it's a difficult disease to treat. And more often than not, when you have metastatic lung cancer, you have metastatic disease, unfortunately. But there are probably a few areas where we believe that patients can have oligometastatic disease, even if it's lung cancer, and that treating those isolated spots makes a difference. One of those might be when you have an isolated brain metastases. Another might be an isolated adrenal metastases. And a third might be when you have either local extension or satellite lesions in the same lobe of the lung. Outside of those three areas that have been relatively well characterized, most of the time when you have metastatic lung disease, in order to be classified as oligometastatic, it's got to be individualized to that particular patient and the decision that the patient's doctors would make to put them into that category. It's not guided by the textbooks, if you will. There are some patients that have lung cancer that have, if you will, indolent metastatic disease. This is patients that have metastatic disease, but they're either treated with systemic chemotherapy or sometimes they're not even treated with systemic chemotherapy that seem to do well over a period of time. And then on a series of scans where there is known distant disease, one or more isolated lesions seems to grow. Perhaps that particular clone got active, got mutated, something led it to fall out of the path of everything else. That might be a patient where you start to think about doing SBRT in to treat the isolated area. We also see this as a potential application of these, and that is that the patient may have had stage 3 disease initially. They might have been treated with definitive chemoradiotherapy. When you treat with definitive chemoradiotherapy over six or seven weeks, the internal organs that are in close proximity have seen enough radiation dose that if you go much beyond that, you risk complications. In this setting, when the cancer comes back just in that isolated area that's been previously treated, chemotherapy is not thought to be as effective. Given that it's usually a bulky area that got radiation and chemotherapy, surgeons are often reluctant to want to operate in that particular space or maybe that's contraindicated by their other medical conditions. In that situation, if you can outline or delineate the area of residual disease, SBRT has frequently been used. And most reports suggest that our ability to do that safely and our ability to use it can be successfully done. True data on true successes are still lacking, but there are certainly more anecdotes that are being acquired that this makes sense and that this is a reasonable approach in this particular unique situation. So with that, I want to thank you all for listening today on an update of the new technologies that are being developed within radiation oncology and how we've moved SBRT from early stage lung cancer into some of these other applications. Thanks for listening. If you like and learn from our GraceCast, you can subscribe on iTunes by just searching for the term Cancer Grace, find podcasts in the subject you want, pick a format of audio or video, and then just click subscribe. It's that easy. And for those of you who don't want to miss any of our programs, there's even a feed for all subjects. 
You can also find us on YouTube at Grace for Cancer Info. And that's the number four in one word, Grace for Cancer Info. Finally, if you haven't been there yet, please check out our Grace website at www.cancergrace.org. And don't forget that donate button in the upper right. Our content, which helps tens of thousands of cancer patients around the world every month, is made possible by your support.